Hey everybody, welcome back. So today I'm going to show you how to clean a skull using an all-natural process called maceration. And in the end, it'll look like that. Okay, so you may or may not have heard of cleaning skulls using maceration, but in my opinion, it is the best way to clean skulls because not only is the process simple, but the end result is professional grade skulls. All you're going to need is a container, clean water, a skull, some gloves, and a mask for when things get a little stinky. Put your skull in the container with plenty of water in a warm spot and seal the top. Change the water every one to two weeks and let the bacteria do the rest. After the skull is fully cleaned, you can then move on to degreasing and whitening the skull if needed. And yes, it really is that simple. Okay, so now that you know the basics of maceration, I'm going to show you a few variations on that and what I personally use. We've got five sheep skulls here, okay? They're all about the same size, so we know that they're going to decompose about the same rate of speed. We've got our control, which is just what I just showed you, a skull in water, clean water over several weeks cleaning. We have a skull with an aquarium heater. Now that is what I personally use. And all we're doing is recreating, you know, Florida weather, where some of you might be in Florida, great, that's awesome, you probably don't need this. Uh, I live in Virginia, the temperatures don't stay constant, so putting an aquarium heater between like 85 and 95 degrees is really going to help that bacteria thrive, okay, and clean that skull quicker. Then what we have is a skull where we're going to put it in there and we're not going to change the water. A lot of people ask, what if you don't change the water, do you have to? So that's going to answer that question, okay? Fourth, we have a skull with an air pump. Now you're, you're probably like, what? Skulls left in water over a long period of time will get what's called corpse wax, and it's this whitish, flaky stuff, kind of looks like soap, has that consistency, like waxy feeling. Um, and that is basically just the fat uh, that doesn't have um, access to oxygen, and it turns into this stuff. I don't know the science behind it, I just know what happens, okay? So we're going to pump in some oxygen into the water and see if that prevents that corpse wax uh, from happening. And then, fifth, we have a black bucket. And all that is uh, to show like raising the temperature of the water again to let that bacteria just thrive. Uh, so we're gonna do a black bucket, you know, compared to the aquarium heater and just having in a white bucket. Okay, so while those skulls are decomposing, uh, we're gonna answer a few questions. But before I do that, one quick thing I wanna say is make sure you put your containers or buckets in an area where like a dog or a coon is not gonna come along and dump it over and try to get into it. So just remember that. That's gonna vary based on what, what skull you're working with. Um, the ones that we have, the sheep skulls, which would be pretty much comparable to like a deer skull, a white-tailed deer skull. Um, it's going to take anywhere between two and four weeks. With the aquarium heater, basically it took two weeks. Um, there was a week after that of just kind of final cleaning. Um, but pretty much two to three weeks if you have heat source. If it's in the middle of winter or you just have cool weather and you're not using um, a heat source like an aquarium heater, it's going to take a, a lot longer than that. But again, that depends on the skull you're working with. Smaller skulls are going to take a lot quicker. Larger skulls, you know, could possibly take a little bit longer. I guess that kind of depends on who you are. It doesn't really bother me that much. Um, but yes, it does. It can get a bit stinky. Um, if you need to, again, you can wear your respirator. Um, but I actually live in a neighborhood, an old town, Manassas. It's kind of hard to tell because we've got fences and trees around here. But... There are literally people like within a couple yards away from me here. But just as long as you contain 
uh, your maceration containers correctly, it really is not going to be that bad. Um, if you do live in a place like me where you have houses on all sides of you, um, the option as far as dumping your buckets, you can dig a hole and then dump your maceration into the hole. That does help with the smell, um, but it can get stinky. Again, that depends on who you are and what bothers you as far as smell goes. Okay, that can be a bit tricky. Um, it depends. On, it depends on a lot of things. Basically, the the weather and the skull that you're working with, the size of the skull. Um, if it's warm weather, I would say every two to three days. Um, in the video, I change the water every week just to get a good clean um, period of time to show you. But in warm weather, things can macerate very quickly. So two to three days is, I would say, a good time to change the water. Um, if it's cooler weather and things just aren't breaking down as quickly, uh, every week is fine, possibly every two weeks um, would work. But pretty much you wanna change it uh, as often as you can, as often as the water gets really hazy um, because it just macerates faster uh, and better when you do change it. Yes, most of the time you are going to need to degrease the skull. It does depend on the skull. Um, like the sheep skulls that we're doing in this video, they're not extremely greasy, so you don't have to do a whole lot of degreasing. Uh, it may be as simple as just putting in a bucket of soapy water for a few days. Uh, that seemed to have worked with what I'm doing. Um, I've had skulls where I didn't have to do a bit of degreasing and others where I had to degrease for uh, almost several months to get all the grease out of them. So it just depends on the skull, really. No, you do not. And that's just my personal preference. A lot of people do take out um, like the eyes and the brains. To me, uh, my take on it is just let the bacteria do the work. It doesn't make sense to do all that work beforehand when within a week or so, the eyes and the brains are just gonna fall out. Um, you will need to skin it. That's one thing I will say. You will need to take the hide off of it Hide takes a very long time to decompose, so that will get in your way. But this is how, as you saw, I'm just gonna put them in the water, eyes in, brains are still in there, um, but I'm just gonna let the bacteria do all the work for me. Yes, you can, but it's not something that I do uh, for a couple of different reasons. First off, um, it's a pain having to dump water out of a large container. So if you're working with larger skulls, so you have a really big container and you've got several of them in there um, that means you have to dump all that water out of that container more often than if you just had a skull say in a bucket or something like that um, and two if you don't do it correctly you can mix up the like teeth and jaws and stuff like that um, but yes you can if you have some smaller skulls like raccoons foxes that type of thing and you're just using a bucket you can put them in the same container but you will need to put them in a mesh bag uh, that's what I use here. So I'll just stick the skull in there raw, zip it up, hang it inside the bucket, and then it'll macerate and you won't lose the teeth or they won't get mixed up with the other skulls. So it is an option. Make sure you do use a bag, a mesh bag, but I don't do it a whole lot. Um, I prefer just to keep everything in one container and do it that way. Yes, it totally works with mummified skulls, and I've done several of them with great results. It might take a little bit longer just because the tissue has to rehydrate before it can start breaking down. Um, I'll show you an example. This is a bear skull that I macerated, cleaned. I got this and it was mummified. It looked pretty, um, pretty crazy, but it took me about four weeks, again, with an aquarium heater to macerate it fully. And generally speaking, bear skulls are pretty greasy but I did not have to do any degreasing with this skull. Um, just, I'm kind of guessing because of the aquarium healer that does help with some of the degreasing while you are macerating it. I'll be honest, I've looked it up on the internet and I can't really find a definitive answer as far as the difference between cold and warm or hot water maceration. Um, I guess maybe the difference could be that Cold water maceration is just uh, a container of water with no heat source, and then a warm maceration or hot maceration is water with a heat source. That's pretty much all I can tell you as far as that. Um, it's not really a scientific, as far as I can find, uh, there's not really a scientific answer to that. Okay, 
it's been 14 days, so exactly two weeks since I put these skulls in the water. And I'm going to show you the results as of right now. Pretty much you have the skull with the aquarium heater is the most clean. It's pretty much clean. I'm just going to stick it in there for one more week uh, just to do some final uh, cleaning on that. Then you have our control, which is just skull in the water, and the skull with the air pump, they're pretty much at the same state in decomposition, um, or decomposing, however you say that. Then we have the skull with the um, black bucket, and the skull where we didn't change the water, they're at basically the same spot. Okay, so it's actually been six weeks for the skull that I put in the bucket, and I have not changed the water on. So let me show you real quick what it looks like. Might be a bit hard to see, but there's actually quite a bit of uh, material on there, and it does not smell good at all. So it still has um, a couple, maybe a week or two of maceration actually changing the water on it. So definitely change your water. Okay, guys, that's it. Um, all of them are clean, mostly. There you are. Um, uh, the one that we did not change the water on is not clean. First off, I'm going to tell you uh, approximately the times. So we had our control, which was just a skull in the water in the bucket. Um, that one took a little over three weeks to clean. Um, sheep with the um, in the bucket with the aquarium heater, that took basically two weeks. At two weeks, it was pretty much clean. Um, had I changed the water more than once a week, it would have been fully clean. So I'm just going to say right around two weeks for the uh, one with the aquarium heater. Then we had the one with the bubbles, because I thought that would help with the corpse wax. Did not help. Actually, um, there was kind of a little bit more corpse wax on it, and it was the most greasiest skull of them all. So don't try that. That was kind of a fail, but we did learn something. Um, next one was the skull in the black bucket. Now that one actually was a few days shorter than the control, so it did help, uh, not significantly, uh, but it did help a little bit. And then the last one, this one we didn't change the water on, I did pull that one out and show it to you, hasn't improved a whole lot, um, basically it's seven weeks and it still needs some more cleaning. Okay, so the question is, which way is the best? Um, personally, the aquarium heater, uh, in my opinion, is the best. You're gonna get consistent results as far as time uh, it takes to decompose the skull and clean it. Um, had this been winter time, everything else would have taken a lot longer than it did. Um, but with an aquarium heater, you're gonna get a consistent time regardless of what time it is in the year. Um, I'll just show you a close-up, though, of some of these. They all pretty much came out the same as far as um, grease and uh, how white they are. All of them I've already put in an, a hydrogen peroxide bath, but uh, you can get a good look. Turbinates are completely intact. I do have all the teeth. I just keep them in little bags so that uh, I don't lose them. This is our aquarium heater one, again excellent condition as you can see but yeah um, like I said it's a great option I think it's the best option as far as cleaning skulls um, but you can give it a try uh, see what you think um, yeah I hope you enjoyed that and hope you learned a little something and again try it out yourself don't take my word for it um, but I think you're really gonna like the end results thanks guys for watching hey everybody thanks uh, again for watching I just wanted to say thank you to a few people who commented on my videos this past week. Kathy Paul Yake, uh, Henrietta Tudor, Ben Wicker, and Megan Manley. They all made comments, so I appreciate that. And Megan said that I was her favorite YouTuber, which is a real honor. Uh, so thanks for saying that. And then I wanted to say thank you to Ray and Becky McDaniel. Uh, they left a review on my Facebook page made some really nice comments, so I appreciate that. Guys, thanks again for watching, and have a good rest of your day, and stick around for more videos to come. All right, guys, see you later. Bye-bye.